This is Connor's comment, and here's five ways to combat China. Watch to the end, because number five is my favorite tip. Like and subscribe if you want more videos like this one, because fuck the CCP. I want to make it clear that this has nothing to do with the Chinese people, culture, or history. This does have everything to do with how terrible the Chinese Communist Party is. I'm tired of pretending that it's okay to support this government in any way, shape, or form. By supporting them, you're supporting the blatant abuse and exploitation of people and a tyrannical genocidal government. They stand for everything that I hate. So this is my way of supporting the Chinese people by not dealing with the CCP until something really changes. Because the Chinese people can't speak up against this bullshit. So we will form them. As one person, I want to see how annoying I can be to Xi Jinping. And you can too. Tip number one. Don't be afraid to talk about how shitty the CCP is. A lot of people feel nervous when talking about countries because they think that it also associates all of the people that are within it. That's what I really want to separate from. It's not the people. It's the government. The people are subjected to listening to the government, but they don't have any control over it. It's not racist to say the Chinese Communist Party is fucking terrible. It's not racist to say to a Russian that Stalin sucked or the USSR did some bad shit. You can love Cuban people, culture, and food, but also say that the Castro regime has done some shitty stuff. You can talk crap on Nazis without a German guy feeling offended. People have tried conflating talking about a country's government and talking about the people of that country. We can talk about China without feeling like we're being racist against a Chinese person. They are a tyrannical government. Tyranny with a 99.9% conviction rate. 99% of the people who are accused of a crime in China end up going and serving a sentence for it. That would be a hell of a coincidence. It's a terrible country. The government's only job should be to protect their people, but the only job for the Chinese government is to protect the Chinese government. Don't be afraid to talk shit on them. Tip number two. Stop buying China's garbage products. In 2019, Canada imported $56 billion worth of Chinese goods. And I'm sure half of them broke after a week. It's almost impossible to buy electronics, furniture, plastics that aren't coming from China. But we can do small things every day when buying stuff to lighten the reliance. We spend tens of billions of dollars on cheaply made goods coming from a country that only wants to leech off of us. And there's a consistent trade deficit of almost a billion dollars. We can do a little bit more and be a little bit better on trying to buy locally and just checking the tags before we purchase something. Next time you want to buy something on Amazon, type in made in Canada and then whatever you wanted to buy. <laughs> Fuck. The biggest thing about not buying Chinese goods is not supporting a country that's going to be exploiting the people that are creating them. Going on Amazon.ca, I type in made in Canada shampoo. It's a little thing that we can do to at least check before we commit to paying for something from China. Even better than that, just shop at a local store. It's called a made in Canada directory. You can type in whatever product that you're looking to buy. We're in Toronto. We're going to look for bikes. So a bike made in Toronto. Bicycle specialties. Bicycles frame building blah 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 hand built made in Canada. Mariposa bicycles. Again, hand-built and made in Canada. It's really, really easy when you're looking for a locally made product in Canada to just go into this site, right? It's all going to be linked in the description down below. And last thing, don't use Chinese apps. Don't trust them. TikTok, let's cut. No TikTok. Don't buy Huawei phones. I wouldn't trust it. Tip number three, don't buy Chinese produce. The last thing you want to be doing is ingesting stuff grown in China. China is Canada's second largest trade partner. We don't do that much in terms of edible stuff. Canada imports about $18 million worth of citrus, $15 million worth of apples and pears, $55 million worth of spices, teas, coffees, 150 
40 million dollars worth of edible vegetables, but not all of it. Whenever you're in the grocery store, you can see where the product was produced. It says right on the sign. So if you see grown in China, just don't buy it. Buy the one next to it. The little bit more expensive garlic from Spain because I don't want the one that's been grown in China. I don't trust it, nor do I want to support them. So much of the stuff that we buy that's produced in China is also grown in Canada. Next time you're in the grocery store, just take a look because you might see two products right next to each other that aren't all too different. One's grown in China or one's grown a little bit closer to home. Tip number four. I want you guys to watch some documentaries on just how terrible China is. One Child Nation is a recent documentary on Amazon Video that exposed the reality of China's one child policy. The most shocking thing of this whole documentary was the horrific things the CCP would do, but it became completely normalized. People just accepted their circumstance because they really didn't have another choice. It's so scary when a government has as much power over the people that the Chinese government government does. You just have to accept your circumstance or get out. The value of life by the Chinese government was so low that they would be doing abortions on women that are eight months pregnant. Forced abortions. That's just murdering that woman's child. Now that's a testament to how scary this government really is and why we shouldn't be supporting them at all. This didn't end until 2015. So let's watch a clip. None of my family questioned the policy or how it was implemented. <laughs> ABC News did a great little expose on China ramping up its surveillance policies to maintain complete control. Facial recognition and AI technology to make sure that they know where everybody is at every time. The people then receive social credit scores, which can go up or down depending how they spend their time or money. Let's watch a clip. China's cities are already flush with cameras, around 200 million of them. What's changing is they're getting smarter. Tip number five is really just to reach out to government, to actually connect with them, right? Let them know how you're feeling. Don't just be the passive observer to what they're doing for you. They work for you. You are an active participant in this democracy. Use it. Send an email. Basically, what we're going to be doing here is I've compiled a list. This list is every single Canadian senator and every single Canadian member of parliament or MP. Paste those all up there. Oh, I take the MPs, add all the way down to the bottom. Boom, boom. Check that out. Not bad, not a bad list. And the Embassy of China. Chinese Embassy, just so they make sure they get it. An open letter to the Chinese Communist Party. You might have heard about it a little while ago, but didn't really think much of it. But it has a ton of signatories from a bunch of really, really reputable people. Written by uh, Mr. Brett Byers. Basically what this letter is, it's written in Chinese characters as well as in English, but it's an open letter to the Chinese citizens and friends of China at home and abroad. Current global crisis has been caused by the regime so many of you have been tolerating or supporting for decades. That we're kind of over supporting or pretending like it's okay to work with the Chinese government. The doctors that were silenced, bullshit around Taiwan, how they're trying to shut them up, the history of China, the millions of people they killed. Tiananmen Square in 1989. Oh, but we should still do work with them. That's cool. We don't want to be a part of supporting such a terrible, terrible country. This letter summarizes the feelings of myself and millions of other Canadians. Fuck China, am I right? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to link in the description all of these senators as well as the members of parliament's email so you guys can have access to it. It is your right as a Canadian citizen to have access to those emails. And what I want you to do is to send a letter of your own. You can have this letter and send it to them directly just through there. It's all going to be linked. And it's not about harassment. It's about actually communicating with government and not being so separate from it that's the strength of a democracy. The fact that they work for us, we don't have to condone every single thing that they do, unlike the Chinese. But our vote is not enough. We need to be loud. We have ways that we can reach. And it's a simple thing that everybody can do. Have a voice. Send an email. I'm sending 
450 emails, give or take. I think it's time to pull the trigger. I'm more or less just afraid of all of the response emails that I'm gonna get. <laughs> it's gonna be like 434 of them. One last read through. Changes need to be made. We cannot be ignorant and complicit to the actions of a dystopian authoritarian dictatorship. Here we go. It is sent. My goal is that you guys also act on sending an email to whoever represents you. I'm gonna link down below how you can find out all of the senator's emails and the local MPs. Send them an email, you can call them in a reasonable manner, then it's completely legal. And I think it's reasonable to send this email to all of our representatives. I don't know. We'll see what comes from it. I wonder if I'll hear anything back. I'm sure I will. There's still one last thing that we need to do to make sure the point is driven home. To the representatives of the CCP, love slash from a friend to the Chinese people. The Chinese ambassador, one to the P.O. box and one to the, uh, the actual address. Yeah, let's go mail it. I think that's how you put a stamp on. It's not. <laughs> they have more power over their people than any other country in history. And that grip isn't loosening. And it's not slowing down. It's a tyrannical government and we need to move away from it.